Uh, through social media, actually. I think it's really important to like post on social media, tell everyone you know, because the more you get out the word that you're like there to help and that you're like creating a difference, you can show other kids how they can create a difference as well. Many of the students I spoke with said they found out about the event through social media. They also urged their peers to join the movement by sharing posts and using the hashtag National School Walkout. But when it came to posting pictures while they were actually there participating in the protest, many chose to simply be present and not post. Why haven't you posted to social media yet today? Um, I honestly haven't gotten the chance to, and I think I should be here more in the moment rather than document how I'm here. Um Following the shooting at Stoneman Douglas, the student activists were called paid protesters, and their motives for speaking out were questioned. So I asked some of the local student protesters if they were concerned about being perceived the same way. You know, real authentic people that post on social media are really out here doing this. Like, we didn't have to come and walk all this way. It's not that close. So if we, if we got this far and we're taking videos, we, we have the right to do so. And it's, uh, it's, real, it's authentic. And others on social media questioned how much the students truly know about gun control legislation. I think last year I wanted to support the cause because I believed in it, but I didn't really know everything that was happening within it. And I think this year I really know what's happening and I know the facts and I want to help everyone and I want to be supportive of the cause. And while there were certainly some students with their phones in the air capturing the moment as it was happening, the majority had signs in their hands. And in some cases, students had signs written on their hands, like these that say, don't shoot. We want that we want that it was the adults, not the students, that seemed to be moved to post about what they experienced in the moment. I was on my way to the National Portraits and came upon them walking down the street and decided to follow them and see where they were going. And why did you choose to post? Uh, because I'm here on vacation. I've never been before, my first time, and I just thought it was really cool that I got to be here during this. I'm missing the Cherry Blossom Festival, so I think this really moves up. Um, Ariane did such a great job, and there was a mom who got so moved and emotional just by seeing her daughter. She's like, I hate that she has to go through this, but love that she's standing up and, and fighting. And what a day. I mean, 75. Right. Now, it's going to go downhill a little bit. I mean, it has to. It's still March, right? Okay. We, we all know that. So we have a yellow weather alert mm -hmm. for tomorrow. Uh, some showers. Now, I will emphasize that if you're west of town, everybody's not going to see a shower. The front's not going to produce showers for everyone. In terms of the bus stop, we could have a few showers in the morning when you drop the kids off, and we could have a couple showers in the afternoon when you pick them up. Look at the temps, though. 64 to start. Are you kidding me? And then 70 by 3 o'clock, and I think that's even on the low side. The best chance for storms will be in the afternoon, but some morning showers are still possible, albeit light and few and far between. Here's the big picture. There's the departing storm. The blizzard went through uh, the Plain States. Denver didn't have snow today, but they had winds of 80 miles per hour from that storm. Now, we'll kind of zoom in a little bit. Notice the tornado watch down into portions of Alabama. We've had pretty good uh, thunderstorms through much of the Ohio Valley with some th uh, severe thunderstorm warnings and watches. So this is where the front is now. This is what's going to roll through tomorrow afternoon and bring us the showers and, yes, a few storms. Right now, just some clouds and mild. I mean, temperatures are more like late May, early June, but things will get changed here, get a correction. 75 tomorrow, then we go down in the upper 50s on Saturday. Mid-50s for St. Patty's Day and Monday. And kind of chilly, uh, 51 on Tuesday. That's kind of cold because our average highs now are in the upper 50s and getting a little bit warmer each time. Now, we talked about the uh, threats on Friday. We'll talk about impacts today or tomorrow, rather, for the yellow weather alert. Moderate impact for the wet morning commute and a wet evening commute. Flooding, not so much, but showers at the bus stop, both in the morning and when you pick the kids up. Yeah, that's a moderate risk or impact as well. OK, headlines. Well, Yellow weather alert tomorrow, showers, a couple of storms, breezy and cooler over the weekend, dry but breezy and cool for St. Patty's Day. Highs will only be 50 to 55. That should not stop any of the festivities. Never does. All right, 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. A lot of clouds, a few spotty showers, 64 D.C., even 63 in Hagerstown. By 9 o'clock, we're in the mid-60s. I think these temps are a little bit low. Notice the front is trying to develop a line of showers here. By 1 o'clock, some showers north of us, up toward Gaithersburg and Frederick. That rolls through. Notice all the yellows and reds now showing up between about 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Some of these could be pretty hefty.